Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We extend a very warm welcome to all our viewers on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We thank God that God has granted you worthy to be in His presence at this holy hour, the hour of deliverance, of liberation. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, most holy and everlasting Father, the God of unapproachable lights, the God of the Word. Once again, we're about to go to your Word. Father, feed us with the heavenly manner, when it dies of our souls, Amen. give us spiritual illumination. Sow the seeds of life in the Father's souls of our hearts. Amen. Let us pray for our in our lives. Amen. And not your speaker, Amen. and not your children. Amen. Let your God work go forward with power Amen. and with fire. Amen. That your glory may be revealed, Amen. and that all glory may be returned to you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 And we're reading from the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. Haggai 2, verses 1 to 9. Haggai was one of the Promise that God used in rebuilding his temple and rebuilding his land. Let me give you the background. What happened that was that God had brought his children to the promised land. The land he promised their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The land he promised to Moses. Despite their rebellion and their turn against God, God had brought them to that land because God is a covenant keeping God. He always keeps his covenants. It's us that we fail to fulfill our own sights. Now, after getting the, uh, to the promised land, the people of the land relaxed. They totally forgot all the instructions of God not to intermarry with the people of the land, not to copy their customs. So what happened? They began to give their daughters in marriage to the men in this land. They began to copy their practices, and they began to worship their gods. Something which God has strictly forbidden. And, of course, once you begin to do that, you're going to sin against God and you're going to open the door of judgment against you. So after sending many of his prophets, Nehemiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, so many to wonder, the Bible says that the judgment finally came upon his people and God sent them out of his land for 70 years. To allow the land to rest from the idolatry. The Bible said there was no more remedy. So at the end of the 70 years, God raised up Cyrus, a gentle king, to command his people to return to their land, which again was fulfillment of what he had told Jeremiah. But after 70 years, the land will have a Sabbath of rest and the people will return. So after 70 years, they returned to the land and they, they began to slowly integrate into the land again. Now, when they started doing that, most of them neglected the temple of the Lord. They were build, busy building their own temples, their own land houses. And of course, God struck them. I'm going to, to read the earlier part of uh, chapter 1. God struck them because they neglected his own temple. That itself is another sermon. Uh, it means that if you put God first, as God said, seek ye his righteousness and his kingdom and all other things be given to you. But these people did not do that. They sought their own and God struck the work of their hands and had nothing to show. Eventually, they came to their senses and they began to rebuild the temple of the Lord. Actually, if you go to um, uh, Haggai chapter 1, starting from Verse 7, let somebody read it. Haggai 1, 7. Do not say the Lord of all. Yes. Consider your ways. Uh -huh. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple, mm -hmm. that I may take pleasure in it uh -huh. and be glorified, mm -hmm. says the Lord. Oh. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. You looked for much, mm -hmm. but indeed it came to little. Yes. And when you brought it home, it blew away. Why? says the Lord of all. Because of my house that is in ruins. Why every one of you runs to his own house? You see, he said, My house is in ruins, but you are building your own houses. See, that's how God looks at you. When you keep on amassing wealth, building houses, and the house of God lays desolate, you don't do anything with the house of God, you don't give God's house anything, you are just build, building your own empire. God will strike you eventually. Go on. Therefore, mm -hmm. the heavens are above you with all the dew. And the heart with those is fruit. You see? 
For I call for a drought on the land, mm -hmm. and the mountains on the grain, and the new wine, mm -hmm. and the oil, mm -hmm. and whatever the ground brings forth yes. of men, yes. and livestock, mm -hmm. livestock mm -hmm. and all and on all the labor of your hands. See, God called for a drought. That means there was famine on everything. Go on, continue your application. Verse 12. Yes. Then yes. the new brother, mm -hmm. the son of Shelter, mm -hmm. the, the, and Joshua, mm -hmm. the son of Jehoshadah, the high priest, with all remnants, remnants of the house, mm -hmm. obey the voice of the Lord mm -hmm. and their God, mm -hmm. and the word of Agai, the prophet, mm -hmm. as the Lord their God had sent him, yes. and people feared the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then Agai, the Lord's messenger, mm -hmm. spoke mm -hmm. the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with him, mm -hmm. says the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of the mm -hmm. the son of Shelter, mm -hmm. governor of Judah, mm -hmm. and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadah, mm -hmm. the high priest, mm -hmm. and the spirit of all remnants of the people. Mm -hmm. And they came and walked on the house of the Lord the of old, the their God, mm -hmm. on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Dion. See? So after God spoke to them and disciplined them by striking the work of their hands, so they had nothing to show, they, they, they came back to their senses and they saw that they had to build the temple of the Lord. So they slowly began to build a temple. And so that's the background to our passage. Now, God now sent Haggai the prophets to, the, to all the people, including the governor, and he said, who is left among you that saw this house in a first glory? He was referring to the temple that Solomon had built, the original temple. See, some of them were children when that temple was built, because this is now 70 years later. And that temple was, according to standards, the most expensive building the world had ever seen. It was all built with gold. You know, everything was gold, gold, gold. Now, despite that, God destroyed that temple because of their rebellion against him. He sent the, uh, the king of Bashir, and he came and burned the temple down. So now that they return to them, they are now going to rebuild that temple. So God asked them, which one of you was alive that saw that first temple in that first glory? And how do you now see it? In other words, if you remember when you were a kid and you saw that beautiful temple that Solomon had built, and look at what you're building now. So is it not in your eyes in comparison as nothing? Because nobody could rebuild the temple of Solomon. I mean, he had so much wealth. Everything was gold. The spoons, gold, silver, everything was gold. So God said, was asking them, is it nothing in your eyes? Having seen the original temple and this one you're seeing now, what does it does it look to you? Zechariah 4 verse 10, Ezra 3 verse 12. Zechariah 4 verse 10, Ezra 3 verse 12. Zechariah 4 10. Yes. Who has despised the day of small things? Mm -hmm. For this, several rejoice to see mm -hmm. the plump line in the land of Zerubbabel. Mm -hmm. They are the eyes of the Lord, mm -hmm. which come true and through throughout the whole earth. Yes. See? And Ezra, 8 was, Ezra 3 verse 12. Do not despise the day of small things. That's the message of God to you tonight. Go on. Ezra 3 verse 12. See the wife and read it. Ezra 3 verse 12 says, But men of the priests and the Levites and the heads of the father's house, old men who are seen, who are seen first temple, worked with the loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Mm -hmm. Yet many shouted aloud for joy. Mm -hmm. See, they shouted aloud because they knew. Kind of temple that Solomon had built. He said, Is it not in your eyes and compare as if it's nothing? What is the message here? Maybe you were very glorious before in your former life. Maybe you had a lot of money, you were prospering your career, and now you have nothing to show for it. If that is the case with you, then this message is for you. Because God is saying that what you're seeing now is not your end point. It's not your end point. The reason why 
you are in this state is because prevailing other things. God says, yes, you have suffered, but do not despise the day of evil. Do not lose hope. Do not think this is the end of you. He said, is it not your eyes in comparison as if it's nothing? What you're seeing now compared to what you had known before. He said, now he says, yet now be strong. O Zerubbabel, say the Lord. And be strong, Joshua, the high priest. And be strong, all you of the land, say the Lord. And walk, for I am with you, say the Lord of hosts. That's the key thing. If God is with us, who can be against us? See, the people were discouraged because they knew the temple that Solomon built, that it was so beautiful, so expensive. Now they're trying to rebuild it, and they knew they couldn't. They couldn't even come near it. But God now sent a message of encouragement to them, not to be discouraged. He said, yet be strong, don't be weak. Don't be discouraged. And that message for some of you watching me right now, because many of you are down, you are slowly losing hope that, oh, God has abandoned me. I don't know what's going on. I, you know, I had everything before, now I have nothing. Is it, am I ever going to you know, be back to where I was? Then you are in the right place for God to talk to you tonight. Zechariah 8 verse 9. Say, yet be strong, all you of the land, for I am with you. See? 1 Samuel 16, 18, Romans 8, 31. Zechariah 8 verse 9. Quickly. Now, Romans 8, uh, 31. Yeah. When they shall see, yes. we saw, we say to these things, mm -hmm. if God is for all, mm -hmm. who can be against all? That is it. If God is with you, who can be against you? Just a question of time. You are going to recover everything you have lost. That's the message God is telling you today. Go on. Go on, Psalm 16, 18. Zechariah 8, verse 9. Yes. Let your heart be strong. Mm -hmm. Eat and hear in these days. Yes. These words are the house of the prophet. Mm -hmm. Which were in the days that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid. Mm -hmm. That the temple might be built. Mm -hmm. That the temple might be built. You see? And say, go on. Uh, it's uh, 1 Samuel 16 18. Is that what you mean? Like, uh, uh, the guy is here. 1 Samuel 16 18. Then answered one of the servants yes. and said, Lo, mm -hmm. I have seen the son of David, yes. the deadly knight, mm -hmm. that is coming in play, mm -hmm. and the mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, yes. and a comely person, yes. and the Lord is with him. That's it. The Lord is with him. See? That's all you need. No matter what you're going through, as long as the Lord is with you, you are going to be okay. You see, no matter how you look at your life right now, you might think, I have lost everything, I don't have anything to write home about. It does not matter. Do you know that the Bible says that Joseph, after he was sold into slavery by his brothers and went to Potiphar's house, the Bible says he prospered, even as a slave. Why? Because the Lord was with him. In a few months, God prospered him, and his boss gave everything he had into his hands. In fact, the Bible says that the only thing that was his food, that everything else, he trusted Joseph with it. Even as a slave. Why? Because God was with him. The same thing after Potiphar's wife falsely accused him, and he was thrown into jail by his, uh, uh, his boss, uh, Potiphar. Even in the prison, the Bible says, God and even in that prison, he prospered and he had favor. So don't look at the circumstances and feel despondent and discouraged. No. The fact that you don't have anything now does not mean that God, God is not with you. It does not mean God has abandoned you. No. Not at all. As long as you have God's presence, you can rejoice because you are going to recover everything. That glory that you think you lost. It's just a question of time. That's what happened to Joseph. You know, when they sold Joseph, when his brother sold him, they thought they had finished his life. They thought that's it. His dreams would never come to pass. And they went and told his dad that, uh, you know, your son has been devoured by an animal. They, they brought a, a cloth, Joseph's 
coat soaked in blood and, and give it to him. And he cried, thinking that the wild animal had eaten Joseph. But that was not the end of Joseph. God had a plan for Joseph's life. And Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt. A foreigner in a foreign country. And he ruled the whole world. So that's the message. God was saying, look at this temple now. It looks as nothing to you. I said, but do not be, do not be afraid. Don't be weak. Be strong, says the Lord. He said, according to the word that I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains with you. Fear you not. My spirit remains with you. Isaiah 63 verse 11, Zechariah 4 verse 6, Nehemiah 9 20. So the covenant I made with you, if you remember, my spirit remains with you. Isaiah 63 verse 11. Yes. Then remember the days of old, mm-hmm. Moses and his people, yes. saying, mm-hmm. where, is, where is he who brought them up out of the sea? Mm-hmm. With the shepherd of his flock, yes. where is he who put his Holy Spirit within them? Mm-hmm. You see? He said, it's not by power, it's not by might. Go on, Zechariah 4 verse 6. Somebody read it quickly. Four or six, yes. This is the word of the Lord. Yes. Mhm. 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 That is it. Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Twenty. Nine twenty. Nine twenty. Yes. Thou also thy good spirit mm-hmm. to instruct them. That is it. It is the spirit of the Lord that will do it. It's not going to be your knowledge. It's not going to be your connection. No. It is the spirit of God. That thing you are asking for is the spirit of God that will do it. God is telling you tonight. But do not fear. Do not lose up. Be strong in your faith. Hold on to God. There was this man that said that when he had problems, he doesn't look at the problems. He looks at the bigness. He doesn't look at the, how big the mountain is before him. He looks at the bigness of God. You know, the people of Israel, when Goliath was sent to to mock them and invite somebody to come and face him. Goliath was over nine feet tall and he was a warrior from his youth. And he would come out every day and taunt the people of Israel that look here, we don't have to fight you. Just bring somebody from your army to face me. And whoever wins, the other side will, will, will bend down and surrender to the other person. So that's all. Every day he came and taunted the people of Israel. Nobody would answer him. Because nobody, uh, this is 9 feet tall person with armor, everything from head to toe. Why, where are you going to even start? But the small boy, David, came out and told Saul that, look, this man insulting us. Who is this or, or circumcised man? He said, let me go and take his head off. He said, what? You, small boy, you've never been to war and you want to attack a warrior? But you know what uh, David said? David said, look, the bear came and I killed it. The same with the lion. He said, this man is no different. So David saw, <laughs> what David saw was different from what the people of Israel saw. They saw a giant. David saw a small thing that he could kill. And of course, it's your sight. It's what you see in your mind that will enable you to overcome. And David went, and we know the story, with a sling, not even with a sword, a slingshot, a catapult. He killed Goliath and cut his head off with Goliath's own sword. And of course, the people fled and Israel won the war. What am I telling you today? Don't look at your circumstances. Look at the bigness of your God. That's what God is telling you tonight. Said Paul, said the Lord of hosts, once in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. God is saying he's going to shake everything in this world to bring glory to his house. That shaking is tribulation so that the people of the world will know him and bring their gifts onto his house. The same thing with you. The Bible says God will restore the wealth of the wicked to the just. Whenever you're lacking, God is telling you that He's going to restore it. How? He's going to take 
from the wicked people all the world that were committed. Do you know there's something called the treasures of darkness? There is treasure in the dark world, and God can take it from them and give it to you, his child. Well, what do you think he did when they went to the, uh, the promised land? The land belonged to other people. It was the most fertile land. And God took it from them and gave it to his own people. So that's the same God going to do to you. You will get the wealth of the wicked around you and you put it in your own hands. That's what we mean by He will fill you with glory. The glory of the nations. Psalm 24 verse 7. The desire of the nations will come. Genesis 3 15. Malachi 3 1. God will shake all nations to bless his children. Psalm 24 verse 7. Yes. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and the lifted up the everlasting door. Oh, yes. And the King of glory shall call him. That's it. The King of all glory and goodness will enter your life after he restores you. One. Malachi 3 verse 1. Genesis 3 15. Yes. And there will be war between you and the woman and, and between your seed and her seed. Yes. By him will your head be crushed, mm -hmm. and by his heel his feet will be under. Uh-huh. That's it. By him your head will be crushed. That's Satan. Satan will crush. God will crush Satan's head in your life. And it says, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Malachi, you know. Yes. Behold. Mm -hmm. I send my messenger, yes. and he will prepare the way before me. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, whom you seek, yes. will suddenly come to his temple. That is it. He will be messenger of the covenant, mm -hmm. in whom you delight. Yes. Behold, he is coming, that is says it. the Lord of hosts. Yes. And that messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord said, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. What did God mean by that? Everything in this world belongs to God. And he can give it to whomsoever he wills. So you don't have to worry doing this, doing that. No, if you please God, he will give you every wealth, every penny you need. That's why he said, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all other things will be given to you. But most of us do the wrong way. We are seeking all these things instead of seeking God and pleasing God. What you spend 20 years in achieving. God can give you in one day. Just one word from God can change your life. But because you don't trust Him, you are running out of skeleton, you keep on wasting all your efforts. And God is waiting. If only this man will call, woman will come to me, I'll just give him this little idea that will make her a millionaire overnight. You know, that woman that wrote that book, um, what's the name of that book again? I can't remember. You know, this woman, she, had, she was rejected as a child. Then she was abused by her husband. And she suffered for most of her life. Suddenly she got this idea to write this book. And now she's a multi-billionaire. She's not even a millionaire. The same with the father of uh, chicken, uh, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. He became a millionaire at the age of 62. Having lost all the jobs, they sacked him, they disgraced him. I mean, most wretched. Then the idea came to me. Within a very short time. So never give up. Whatever you're going through is only temporary. That house they saw, it was nothing compared to the original house. But God says, no. I'm with you. As long as I'm with you, anything is possible in your life. The glory of this latter house, that's the, the temple they were building, he said, shall be greater than that of the former uh, Solomon's temple, said the Lord of hosts, and in this place would I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. But to them, they would not believe that because there was nothing compared to the temple of Solomon. But God says, look, this house you're building right now that you think is nothing, <laughs> by the time I finish with it, you will find that it's even much better than that one that Solomon built. And that's exactly what happened. So the message to you and I today is don't despise the little small things. Don't look at the current circumstances to determine your future. Look to God. As long as you're in God, God will restore and promote you and grant you what you didn't even think of. He said, in this place, would I give peace? Psalm 85, verses 8 and 9. 
Isaiah 9, verse 6, Luke 2, verse 14. You want the peace. Jesus is the peace, the prince of peace. As long as you are with him, he will grant you his peace and his blessings. And the glory of your life, the current life, will be better than the former life. Is that uh, Psalm 85? Yes. Verses 8 and 9. Yes. And when you will go, mm -hmm. the Lord will speak. Yes. For he will speak peace yes. to his people mm -hmm. and to his saints. Yes. But let them not fall back to fool. Mm -hmm. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Yes. That glory may dwell in our land. Amen. Let's close. Isaiah 9, verse 6. And go to Luke 11, 31. John 1, 14. Luke 11, 31. John 1 14. Is that 9 6? Yes. For unto whom the child is born, yes. unto whom the son is given, mm -hmm. and the government will be upon his shoulder, oh, yes. and his name will be called Wonderful, yes. Cancel, oh, yes. Mighty God, uh -huh. Everlasting Father, yes. the Prince of Peace. That's it. The Prince of Peace. He is the one that can give you peace. Maybe you are in trouble right now, your heart is at rest. You need Jesus. Once he comes in, he will speak his peace to your heart. Luke 11, 31, John 1, 14. The Queen of the South, Luke 11, 31. 31, yes. The Queen of the South will come up on the day of judgment. Yes. And give her the vision against the men of this generation. Mm -hmm. For she came from the ends of the earth mm -hmm. to give ear to the kingdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And now some people are going to Solomon. He's here. The kingdom of Solomon. Yes. John. John 1, 14. 1, 14. And the world became flesh mm -hmm. and dwelt among us, yes. and we beheld his glory. Mm -hmm. The glory as of the holy begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's it. So, you and I have been given the word today. Don't look at your current circumstances to determine your future. All you need is for God to be with you. God was with King David, was with me, changed for 13 years. By King Saul. God never left him. And we know what happened to King David, how his kingdom was restored to him. God was with Joseph. For 13 years, Joseph was lived like a slave, from slavery to being a prisoner. But we know at the end, God made Joseph the prime minister of Egypt. So many other examples in the Bible. What I want to tell you, you are not at the end of your journey yet. Be strong. Believe God. Take him at his word. Make sure you are, he is with you. His spirit is with you. And I can give you the assurance that in this new year, God will restore you. He will beautify you. He would promote you more than you can imagine. If only you hold on to him. Now, if you are watching me and you are in the States, like you are gradually losing hope because of your life, you are facing difficulties, you don't know where to turn. You don't have to be worried about your stakes. All you need is to have God with you. The Spirit of God, as long as it's with you, He will make a way that there's no way. He said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. That anointing my head with all my cup runs over. In the presence of his enemies, God laid a table before him. God will lay a table before you in the presence of your enemies this year. He will bless you, he will promote you, Amen. and even your enemies will know that you serve a living God. Amen. Now, if you are watching me and you are yet to surrender your life to Christ, this is an excellent opportunity. The first new moon service of the new year couldn't be a better time. The Spirit of the Lord is here. This is the best time before you start anything this year to surrender to him so that your life for 2024 will be different from all the years you've had. How do you do this? You simply confess your sins, you admit your sins and ask him to forgive your sins and to come into your life. It's very simple. Let us pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I've sinned against God and man. I'm sorry for my sins. Have mercy and forgive me my sins today. Wash my sins away with precious blood. Then come inside my heart and begin to rule and reign over my life. Become my Lord and Savior. Write my name in your book of life in heaven and take my name from the book of the dead. And I promise to serve you every day of my life. 
Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That simple prayer, if you meant it and you said it, your life will turn around. Because of your sins will be canceled. You become like a newborn baby. And from this moment on, your life will take a drastic change. Because you'll be walking towards the kingdom of God in heaven. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, will my God. Grace and everlasting Father, we thank you for the precious words of life given to us today. On this first new moon service, we have come to honor and worship you. Father, let your presence be with us throughout this year. As your presence will be Joseph, as will King David. Let it be with us. Amen. Let us see your hand upon our lives. Amen. Whatever we may be going through right now, Father, we know this is not the end. We know you will take us to greater heights because the glory of our lives will be better than the glory of the former lives. Amen. Fulfill your word. Confirm your word in our lives. Let this year be a year of wonderful testimony of your glory, of your kindness and your mercy. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 That's it for today. Read this passage again. Let God minister to you. And let the word take control of your life. Let go walking God is a miracle. Walking God is the high.